Yeah, they, man. I normally bring in three tissues in my pocket. I got six. <laughs> this is a six tissue Sunday. Uh, yeah, to what Jesse said, there, there, there's been a lot of uh, range of emotions about sending CTK. You know, when you know that it's right when it just, it really hurts. We want Christ the King to stay, and yet we want him to go because it's about the kingdom, it's about the gospel. Um, we are in the middle of a sermon series, actually, we just started a sermon series called Liturgy because we are a liturgical church, and some may ask, well, what does that mean? Great question. The answer to that is liturgy literally means our response to who God is and what he's done. God has revealed himself. He's initiated his grace, his love, his mercy, his creational redemptive power. Uh, and it's our response as created beings to simply respond appropriately and accordingly in a fitting way to who God is and what he's done. That's liturgy. And in this service, we have a number of different movements, and we're going to be going through those movements uh, over the next eight weeks. Now, the reason why today we are starting with the sending, because some may ask, well, why are you starting at the end? Why not start at the beginning? For there's three reasons. First is that um, we are in the season of epiphany, which epiphany means the revelation of Jesus to the world. Jesus is the light to the world. He's been revealed to the Gentiles, and so oftentimes you'll have the gospel being read about the Magi coming to see Jesus. Uh, that through Christ, redemption, salvation has gone, gone out to the world. So that's, that's what Epiphany is, and it's about eight to nine weeks usually. And so this is the season that we're in. So we're beginning with the sending that marks and sets the, the trajectory for this entire series. Uh, the second reason is, is because where we end up influences, impacts, determines what we do today. Where we want to end up will shape and influence our trajectory and what we're doing now. So, for example, when I do a wedding rehearsal, I'll always begin with the end. I'll begin with the recessional, actually. So I'll line up the bridesmaids, and, you know, they'll be in their position. First thing that we do at the rehearsal. And then the next thing is I'll put the, together the groomsmen. And the reason why we usually start late for our rehearsals is because the groomsmen are late. Uh, but we line them all up, and then we do the recessional. So they know who they're going with, where they're standing, the cadence or the pace in which they're recessing. And once we get that right then everything else falls into place. Everything else is influenced by where we are going to or how we're ending up. So when we're doing the processional, they know who they're walking down with, they know the spacing, they know the cadence, and they know where they're standing. We're looking at the recessional, we're looking at the sending today so that we know how to stand now. Where we're going impacts and influences how we live our life today. So we're going to be going through the recessional or the, the sending part. But the third reason why we're starting with the sending is because we're sending out CTK and we're sending out the Blaine family. This is the day that we get to send out Christ the King. Come on, let's go. And if you're here for the first time and you're wondering what this is all about, I would encourage you to check out uh, Christ the King and the great work that God is doing in them and through them. This is the day that we get to celebrate sending out Church plant number five. Yeah. Church plant. This is an excursus, but I, I am deeply grateful for this community. What you all have gone through and what you've done during these past two years is nothing short of miraculous. Your sacrificial giving, your patience, your faithfulness, in the midst of all of the pivots, all of the transitions, and even in the midst of it all, this church is planting another church. And so I just want to say thank you so much, Wellspring, and thank you so much, Christ the King, for having the faith to plant a church for such a time as this. So the sending, what is this all about? What, what, what are we doing in the sending? It's the last part of the service we talked about last week, is that we have the gathering, the word, the table, and the sending. The sending has three components. It has the priestly blessing where the priest gets up and says, may the Lord bless you and keep you and may the face of Christ shine upon you. The next component is the recessional where then we leave under the banner of the cross. And the third part is the dismissal where the deacon stands at the back and says, now let us go forth proclaiming the good news of the gospel. And the congregation responds, thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Now notice what we don't, we don't say... Let us go forth into the world proclaiming that Jesus rules and reigns over all things if we have to, you know, if we must, if you're making me. You know, 
There's a exuberant um, eruption of praise at the end when we know that the reality is, is that we are a sent people. Now, why is that so significant? And under each one of these movements, the, the priestly blessing, the recessional, and the dismissal, they re- represent three important components because the dismissal speaks to the importance of the sending, the priestly blessing speaks to the dynamic of the sending, and the recessional says, how are we sent as God's people? So those are the three things that we're going to be looking at. The importance of being sent, <clears throat> the dynamic of our sending, and then lastly, how are we sent? And we'll see these three things in, the psalm, in psalm 67. So if you have your scriptures, go with me to Psalm 67, then we're going to look at the sending. First, the importance of the sending. Why do we say at the end, thanks be to God, alleluia, 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 and we are filled with exuberant praise and gratitude over the sending? In Psalm 67, there's a, it's, a, it's arranged like a chiastic structure. And what that means is is that certain verses mirror other verses. So verses 1 and 2 mirror 6 and 7. Verse 3 mirrors 5. And then 4 is the the, the climax of the whole thing, is the primary communication of what the Psalter or the psalmist is trying to communicate to the audience. And in verse 1 and 2, mirroring 6 and 7, the theme is blessing. Because look at verse 1. May God be gracious to us and bless us. Notice the same theme in verse 5 and 6. May the Lord's people praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. Verse 7, may God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Blessing. The theme of 3 and 5 is the people praising God. Verse 3, may the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. Verse 5, may the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. So blessing, praise, But at the center of it all is what the psalmist is trying to ultimately communicate, which is verse 4. Listen, may the peoples praise you, may all the peoples praise you, verse 4, may the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. So at the end, we, have, we see all of the earth rejoicing and shouting and fearing and loving the Lord. In other words, there's the final redemption and restoration of, of all things. How do we get from where we're at now to the final restoration and redemption of all things? Verse 4, that the nations be glad and sing, for God rules the peoples with equity and guides the nations of the earth. That through the church, through the people of God, we reflect and bring awareness and participate in the universal rule and reign of Christ until the final redemption of all things. That is the main story plot line of the entire scriptures, that everything is rushing towards Revelation 21 and 22, the final restoration of all things. How is that possible? The universal rule and reign of Christ and the church gets to participate with that. That's why we say at the end, thanks be to God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's no more noble purpose than to participate in God's great story, to participate and to bring awareness to Christ's universal rule and reign. Uh, Leslie Newbigin, you can't preach a sermon on missions without quoting Leslie Newbigin. Uh, Newbigin says, The Bible is covered with God's purpose of blessing for all the nations. It is current concerned with the completion of God's purposes in the creation of the world and of man in the world. It is not, to put it crudely, concerned with offering a way of escape for the redeemed soul out of history, but with the action of God to bring history to its true end, redemption. It is the full, it is full of vision, that is the Bible. The Bible is full of vision of restored humanity living in peace and happiness with the renewed creation. That the storyline of the scriptures is, is that we as the church, as the people of God, participate and bring awareness to the universal rule and reign of Christ until the redemption of all things. And that's the mission that we're called to be caught up in. So and if you're sharing Jesus with somebody and they say, are you trying to convert me? Say, no, not primarily. What I'm doing is is I'm participating in the universal rule and reign of Christ (laughs) to bring about the redemption of all things. And they're, oh, It, it works so much better. Anything that you do, when you open up your mouth, when you... Come alongside somebody when you help somebody along the way and you declare the hope that's found within you. 
when you're walking in the fruit of the spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, and people ask the question, why are you so different? And you give testimony to the grace of Jesus. What you're doing is you're participating in the universal reign of Christ that brings redemption to all things. So powerful. That's why David Bosch says mission is more and different than recruitment to our brand of religion. That's boring and bad. It is the alerting of people to the universal reign of God through Christ. That's what we're caught up in. So why do we plant churches? To participate. We plant churches to participate in the universal reign of Christ to the redemption of all things. Through the planting of churches, we are revealing the manifold wisdom of God in Virginia Village as Christ the King is planted. There's nothing more exciting to be a part of, to participate in. This is the grand mission that God is about, and he's invited us to be a part of it. Now, you think, well, that's kind of a high idea. It's kind of up there in the clouds. But if you look throughout scriptures, God continues to use small things, small actions to bring about his universal rule and reign. I mean, Moses just raised his staff, small thing, raised his staff, and the sea was split. Samson took a jawbone, a jawbone, and slayed thousands of the Israelites' enemies. Joshua just blew a trumpet and marched around in seven times, and the walls came down. Small thing. Incredible results. Gideon took a torch and some light and threw it on the ground, and they just conquered the Midianites. Small thing. Extravagant results. David took a stone and slayed an enemy of the Lord. Jesus took five loaves of bread and two fish, and he multiplied it for the 5,000, which is first centuries speak for a lot of people because they were just counting men. That's like 10,000, maybe 15,000 people with five loaves and two fish. God takes small things and when they're placed in his hands by the people of God, incredible things take place. That's why we get to participate. That's the significance of the sending is that we are participating in the universal reign of Christ that brings about the redemption of all things. So when we get to the end and when we say go forth into the world proclaiming Jesus reigns, it's a declaration that you're participating in his grand mission. All right, number two, the dynamic of the sending. It comes from the priestly blessing. The priestly blessing is, we have two priestly blessings. The one that's out of our Book of Common Prayer uh, from the Anglican Church in North America. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the face of Jesus shine upon you. And that comes from Numbers chapter 6. And actually, if you look at Psalm 67, it's very fascinating because in verse 1, it says, may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us. That's the ironic blessing, not ironic, ironic Blessing found in number six. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the face of Jesus shine upon you. But it splices together a promise to Abraham found in Genesis 12, verse 2, so that your ways may be known on the earth. So we are blessed, not just to have our happy tank filled up, but we are blessed to be a blessing to the nations so that salvation come among all the nations. So here's the dynamic that we as the people of God are blessed to be a blessing first, first. We are blessed. God calls us his people. God calls us his children. And we need to understand the being before the doing. We can't be a blessing unless we understand and receive the blessing. Uh, If you look at Jesus' life, there was two significant points in his ministry where the father booms from heaven and says, this is my beloved son, in him I'm well pleased. It was before he had done any stuff. No stuff yet. Nobody getting healed. There's no miracles, signs, wonders. No raising people from the dead yet. No breaking, you know, feeding 5,000. None of that yet. The miracles came. The ministry came. But it was preceded at Jesus' baptism when the Father booms from heaven and says, Behold, my son, and you, you, I'm well pleased. The second time it happens is when Jesus is on the Mount of Transfiguration. And at that point... Jesus' ministry has shifted and his face is now turned towards Jerusalem. His face is now turned to the cross. And it's on that last part of the journey in his ministry that the Father again booms from heaven and says, before you even go to the cross, I want you to know you are my beloved son. Identity comes before the blessing of others. We need to understand who we are, whose we are before we understand what we do. 
When Jesus sends out the 72, they, they cast out demons. They do all these signs and wonders and miracles. They come back and they say, Jesus, even the demons submit to us. And Jesus says, don't rejoice that the demons submit to you, but what? Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. What's most important is that you understand that you are blessed, that you have an irreducible identity, that you are God's, you are in the palm of his hands, and he calls you sons and daughters. So as we send out CTK, there's going to be times where budget's hard to meet, <laughs> and ministry's hard, there's disappointments, there's struggles. And as you launch out, know that what's more important than what you do, it's who you are and whose you are. The Christ, the King, that you know, that your identity is sons and daughters of the Heavenly Father. That you are blessed because of who he has called you to be. Second, we are then called to be a blessing, called out, just as Abraham was called out. God never calls people in without calling them out. He never calls them in to, you know, just give them gulps and gulps of his love and mercy without then going out into the world and showing that same mercy and grace to others. Abraham, come in, go out. Moses, in, now out. Isaiah, come close, go out. All throughout the prophets and in the early church with the apostles, come in, I'm going to bless you. Now I'm sending you out. Just as the Father has sent me, says Jesus, so I am now sending you. Receive my blessing, but then be a blessing to the nations. And this is what we were built for. We were built in the image of God, which means we were built to love, give ourselves away for the sake of others, not for project self, but for the purpose of blessing and serving and loving other people. NYU did a study a number of years ago where they, they, they um, researched and did a study on those that were coming from middle class and upper middle class uh, arrangements, and these kids were just doted upon, consume, consuming lives. They just consumed and consumed and consumed with no outlet to serve, and the depression rate skyrocketed. How is that possible when you're given so much and you're, and you're experiencing depression? Because they're receiving, but they're not giving out. They're rotting on the inside. We're never meant to hold on to the blessing, but to give the blessing away. Manna. There's one condition with manna. You're, you're to gather it, consume it, share it with others, but don't keep it for tomorrow. If you try to store up for yourself, it rots. If you store up God's blessings that he has given to you and you, and you hold on to those blessings, they will rot inside of you, inside of me, inside of us. So what's the dynamic of being sent? We have to understand first that we are blessed. But secondly, we are blessed to be a blessing for the sake of others, for loving and serving others. Lastly, let me just say this. You are empowered. You are liberated. You are set free to rule and reign with Christ, to partner, <laughs> to partner in his grand mission, his universal reign, to be a blessing to the nations. How is this possible? The methodology is completely opposite than the world. Because after you are blessed with the priestly blessing, and also with the priestly blessing, we have the, may the Lord bless you and keep you, but we also add the Kenyan blessing, by the way, I forgot that. The Kenyan blessing where we throw all of our sins at the cross, all of our problems we send to the cross, all the devil's works we send to the cross. We unload all of the sin and the consequences of sin. Sin, death, and hell, we just unload that on the cross right? And all of our hopes are set on the risen Christ. Now, the reason why we call that the Kenyan blessing is because it came from Kenya, right? <laughs> and we are blessed because the sin has moved from us. And he who knew no sin became sin so that we who were sinners might become the righteousness of God. That's good news. We have been blessed and then therefore to be a blessing. So what takes place right after the priestly blessing? It's the recessional where the cross goes out and we as the people of God follow it. So the, the importance of mission is that we're participating in his rule and reign. The dynamic of mission is that we are blessed to be a blessing. But how we or the methodology of mission is under the shadow of the cross. We are a cruciform people. We don't do things the way the world does things. We don't do things based upon the world's standards. What Paul says is, if you want to know the secret of evangelism, if you want to know the secret of my ministry, this is what he says in 1 Corinthians 2. For I resolved to know nothing with you while I was, I'm sorry, 
I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. That was the secret of his ministry. What he was saying is, is that people won't come to know the Lord based on proficiency. That won't minister to the hearts of people that are lost, living in an environment and in a culture of post-Christendom, where hearts are especially hard to the gospel. Being a really, really proficient church will not work. The only way that the gospel can go through to a hard heart is by lifting high the cross of Jesus Christ. And that we go forth, not in our proficiencies, but under the shadow of the cross. Now, when I say don't go forth in proficiency, what I'm not saying is just do stupid things. You know, do really bad things. Or being weak just means I'm, 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 gonna, I'm just always going to be whatever. I'm, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that we baptize our proficiencies, baptize our skills, baptize our giftings under the grace of the gospel that we go forth from this place in a posture of weakness, recognizing that it's only the cross of Christ that transforms hearts. We do not abide by, ultimately, the org chart of the world because the org chart of the kingdom is reversed. The last are first and the first are last. The org chart of the kingdom is, blessed are you who are poor in spirit, for yours is the kingdom. The org chart of the kingdom is, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are those who are meek, for you will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, you will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. That's the org chart of the kingdom. Blessed are you of pure in heart, for you will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. So we go forth under the banner of the cross. And as we go out into a lost and a broken world, we go forth vulnerable. We go forth weak because we recognize that the power of the kingdom doesn't come from our wisdom. It comes from the wisdom from above. And that's the cross. So when we go forth, we go forth in the cross. Now, uh, Jesse shared in a sermon a number of weeks ago uh, that uh, this past year has been characterized by vulnerability, of weakness, of picking up the cross and following him. Following him at times that did not make sense, you know. Um, he would say that there's been a lot of disappointments, there's been some frustrations, there's been some hurt, and some pain in the midst of it all, loss in the midst of it all. And if you were here that Sunday where he put up the scatter plot from Google Maps about all the different places that he was looking at in Virginia Village that were possibilities to worship. And along the way, there was scenarios where they would say, yes, 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 yes. But like in the course of like 10 days, there was about 15 yeses that turned to no, 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 no. And during this season, it was just like Jesse and Sarah picking up their cross and saying, we're going to follow you, Jesus, because it's not going to be based upon our power, our might, or our wisdom. God, you got to go before us. you got to go before us. And as they just submitted themselves to the cross of Christ, what you heard a couple weeks ago when Jesse preached was that the glory of the cross was lifted high when they were able to find a worship space at Salem. That when all of the doors shut, there was one door at the 11th hour that opened up. And it was God's invitation to say, come, this is where I want you to be. And it was the perfect place, perfect location. That's the wisdom and the glory of God. That's the faithfulness of God. And that's the faithfulness of a church that's willing to submit their methodologies to the methodologies of the cross. The thing that excites me about that is because there's, there's a church planting principle that says how you start is how you finish. That what you do in the early days will set the DNA of the church plant. And what Christ the King has said is that the cross of Jesus Christ is at the center of the church. It's not based upon my strength, but in my weakness I will submit myself to the cause of Christ. And then through that submission, we will see the glory of Jesus cross lifted high, and all eyes point to King Jesus, Christ the King. So, Christ the King, Jesse, may the Lord, may the Lord bless you, keep you, may the face of Jesus shine upon you, as you follow the cross, 
out into a lost and broken world, participating in the universal rule and reign of Christ until the redemption of all things. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Jesse, come on up. And uh, Sarah, if you could come forward, and Clara, Adelaide, Ridley, come forward. Um, we're going to pray blessing over the Blaine family. I'd also like to invite up the, uh, any staff, any board members, come forward. And we're just going to pray blessing over this couple, this family. Also, we've invited the kids up because we're just not sending one person. We're not just sending a couple. We're sending a family and we're sending families and singles and everything else. And so we're, we want to first start off before we send out the entire church, we want to start by praying blessing over the Blaine family. And I have some really particular prayers, but after that, we're going to open it up to the entire congregation so that we can ask for God's goodness and mercy to be showered down upon the Blaine family. So if you feel comfortable, just lift up your hand towards the Blaines. If you don't, that's okay. You don't have to do that. But if you feel comfortable, let's, uh, let's pray for the Blaine family. And we'll respond by saying, hear our prayer. We pray that the Blaines will be kept fresh and renewed in the riches of your grace, Lord. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray the gospel will be powerfully at work in their hearts granting them an unprecedented awareness of your presence and kindness, revealing the beauty and love of Jesus, granting them joy, wisdom, freedom in the midst of multiple challenges and spiritual assaults. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for strong marriage and family. Guard and protect them from Satan's attacks. Soak the embers of their love for each other. Give them the wisdom and love to parent their children, Clara, Adelaide, and Ridley. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for favor in their community, for natural relationships with the neighbors. We pray the transformed lives to the power of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, and we pray for the blames, for the power of the Spirit to cultivate all of the fruit and gifts of the Spirit. We pray for your kingdom to come and your will to be done in and through them. Lord, in your mercy, now let us offer up our own prayers for the Blaine family. In Christ the King Church.
And Lord, by your spirit, set apart the Blaine family to do the work that you have called them to do. We thank you, Jesus. The schemes, the plans of the enemy have been defeated. That you are guarding and protecting and empowering the Blaine family to declare and to reveal the kingdom of God in Virginia Village. We pray for fruitfulness. We pray for revival, for spiritual awakening to take place in that part of the city. We pray your blessing over Jesse and Sarah, their marriage, and upon their kids for the family. Lord, may you go before them, establish the work of their hands, and may all things be done to the glory of your name, King Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Yeah. And now let's stand. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's greet one another with the love of Jesus. Amen. And I'd like to invite up everyone who is going with Christ the King as we pray blessing over you. Yeah, come on up. Come on up. We want to send forth the church with the blessing. That you guys may know that you are not alone, that you have the greatest resource in the world. You have the Holy Spirit guiding you, guarding you, empowering you, and protecting you. May the Lord continue to bless you. And I know that there's a lot of people online who are going with uh, Christ the King who had um, cold symptoms. <laughs> they couldn't join us. So, uh, man, praise the Lord. Look at this group. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. And wellspring, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the face of Jesus shine upon you. And Christ the King, may the face of Jesus shine upon you, Blaine family. May you know that the only name under heaven given for health and salvation is the name of Jesus. May your blessing be upon Claire as she leads music, on Becca as she leads children, on the ciphers. On the thighs, we want to pray your blessing on all of the leadership. We thank you for Craig and all that he has done. And Jesus, above all things, may your spirit empower them to be blessed, to be a blessing in Virginia Village as they partner in the universal reign of Christ to bring about the redemption of all things. And we ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. And all of our problems... We stand in the cross of Christ and all of our sins. We stand in the cross of Christ. Come on. All the devil's works. We stand in the cross of Christ. Come on. All of our hopes. We set on the risen Christ. Hallelujah. Spring Church and Christ the King Church, let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia! Alleluia! Alleluia!